Welcome to this presentation on PRC 0065 Automatic Under Frequency Load Shedding Standard. This standard is one of the major standards which helps in ensuring bulk power system security. Let's start by understanding what under frequency means. Frequency in a power system is the number of times that an alternating current changes its direction per second, and it's measured in hertz, hz, to ensure that equipment operates correctly. The frequency is typically maintained at a design steady level of either 50 or 60 Hz. However, under frequency occurs when the system frequency drops below the normal operating level. This usually happens due to a sudden imbalance between power supply and demand, which can cause a range of problems such as voltage instability, equipment failures, and even blackouts. To restore frequency and prevent further damage, Power system operators use MES measures like load shedding or under frequency load shedding UFLS. Load shedding involves the intentional reduction of power to a section of the power grid, while UFLS is a more automated process that involves disconnecting certain loads to restore frequency. It's important for power system operators monitor frequency closely to maintain a stable and reliable power system by continuously measuring the system frequency. They can take appropriate actions to keep the frequency within the acceptable range and prevent under-frequency events from occurring. In summary, under-frequency occurs when the power system frequency drops below the normal operating level due to an imbalance between power supply and demand. Power system operators use measures like load shedding and UFLS to restore frequency and prevent further damage. Monitoring the frequency is crucial to maintaining a stable and reliable power system. In the world of power systems, under-frequency events can be a significant concern. But what exactly causes these events? Let's explore some of the common reasons why under-frequency events occur in power systems. One common cause of under-frequency events is sudden loss of generation. This can occur due to equipment fear or other unforeseen circumstances that result in a significant reduction in available generation capacity. When this happens, the system frequency can drop rapidly. Another cause of underfrequency events is an increase in load demand. If there is a sudden spike in demand for power, the load can exceed the available generation capacity, causing the system frequency to drop. Faults or failures in transmission lines transformers, or other equipment can also lead to under-frequency events. These types of failures can cause a sudden drop in available generation capacity, leading to imbalances in the system and frequency variations. In some cases, problems with the frequency regulation system can lead to under-frequency events. This can include issues with equipment settings or equipment failures. Overloading of distribution networks is another potential cause of under-frequency events. If distribution companies allow more demand than the network can handle, it can cause voltage drops and frequency variations in the local area, which can lead to under-frequency events. Grid codes are technical requirements that ensure the safe and reliable operation of the power system. If distribution companies or generation plants fail to follow these codes, it can lead to imbalances in the system and cause under-frequency events. Finally, a lack of communication and coordination between distribution companies, generation plants, and the transmission system operator can also lead to under-frequency events. When there is a lack of communication, it can be difficult to maintain balance in the system and respond quickly to unexpected events. In summary, there are many factors that can contribute to under-frequency events in power systems. By understanding these factors and taking steps to address them, it is possible to improve the reliability and stability of the power system. In the world of power systems, maintaining stability and reliability is critical for ensuring a consistent and uninterrupted supply of electricity. To maintain the frequency of a power system under its operating limit, several measures can be implemented. These include Accurate forecasting plays a critical role in power system stability. By estimating the demand for electricity accurately, power system operators can plan generation accordingly and maintain the supply-demand balance. Accurate forecasting reduces the risk of frequency deviations due to unexpected changes in demand enabling the system to operate smoothly efficiently.
Spinning reserve availability is another key factor in maintaining frequency stability during sudden imbalances between supply and demand. Spinning reserve refers to the amount of available capacity that can be quickly dispatched to balance the system. By having sufficient spinning reserve capacity available, power system operators can respond quickly to changes in demand and maintain frequency stability. Resource adequacy is another critical factor in power system stability. It refers to having a sufficient amount of generation resources to meet the demand for electricity. Resource adequacy ensures that the generation capacity is sufficient to meet the demand for electricity, which helps in maintaining the supply-demand balance and frequency stability. Grid discipline is also essential in maintaining the stability and reliability of the power system. Adherence to grid codes and operational guidelines helps prevent frequency deviations due to grid-related issues. By ensuring that all system operators follow the same rules and procedures, grid discipline helps maintain consistency and stability in the power system. Ancillary services, which are provided to support the operation of the power system, such as frequency control. These services help in maintaining frequency stability by providing additional resources to balance the system during sudden imbalances. System monitoring refers to the continuous monitoring of the power system parameters, such as frequency, voltage, and load. This helps in identifying any deviations from the expected values and taking corrective actions to maintain frequency stability. Demand-side management involves managing the demand for electricity by implementing measures such as demand response. This helps in reducing the demand for electricity during peak periods and maintaining the supply-demand balance and frequency stability. Emergency demand disconnection refers to the disconnection of demand during emergency situations such as blackouts or system disturbances by automatic under-frequency load shedding. This helps in reducing demand for electricity and maintaining the supply-demand balance and frequency stability during emergency situations. By implementing these measures, Power system operators can ensure that the frequency of the power system remains within its operating limit and maintain the stability and reliability of this system. Under-frequency events in a power system can have serious consequences and lead to several problems. These include Voltage instability, as the frequency drops, the voltage in the system may also decrease, which can lead to voltage instability and equipment failures. Loss of synchronization, if the frequency drops too low, generators and other equipment in the system may lose synchronization with the grid, leading to equipment damage and potentially causing widespread blackouts. Overloading of equipment, as the frequency drops, the load on the remaining equipment in the system may increase, potentially leading to overloading and equipment failures. Tripping of protective devices. Protective devices such as relays may be designed to trip when the frequency drops below a certain level, potentially leading to unnecessary load shedding or equipment damage. The landing scheme operation, the landing schemes will start operating if designed and designed in the system which can result in system splitting leading to the deterioration of the overall system operational state. Cascading failures, if the under-frequency event is not controlled. It can lead to cascading failures, where multiple equipment failures occur in a chain reaction, leading to a widespread blackout. It is important for power system operators to take proactive measures to prevent under-frequency events from occurring, as well as having contingency plans in place to manage and mitigate the consequences if such events occur. By doing so, the stability and reliability of the power system can be maintained, and the risk of widespreads can be reduced. Automatic under-frequency load shedding, or offless, is an essential protective measure used in power systems to prevent widespread blackouts during under-frequency events. Under-frequency events can occur due to several reasons, including sudden loss of generation, increase in load demand, transmission line or equipment failures, frequency regulation problems, overloading of distribution networks, and failure to follow grid codes, among others. Offless works by automatically shedding a predetermined amount of load from the system when the frequency drops below a certain level. By shedding load, the system's demand is reduced, and the frequency can be restored to normal levels, preventing a widespread blackout. 
UFLS schemes are typically designed to shed load in a coordinated and prioritized manner, with the most critical loads being shed last. Office is designed to ensure that the most essential services, such as hospitals and emergency response systems, remain online during under-frequency events. It helps to prevent voltage instability, loss of synchronization, overloading of equipment, tripping of protective devices, a landing scheme operation, cascading failures, and other problems that can occur during under-frequency events. Inquiry. Office is an essential protective measure that power system operators use to prevent widespread blackouts during under-frequency events. It works by automatically shedding load from the system in a coordinated and prioritized manner, ensuring that critical services remain online during an event. Office is just one of the many tools and strategies that power system operators use to maintain the stability and reliability of the power system. This is one example on how offloads work. It can be observed that when frequency falls below automatic under frequency load shedding setting, load shedding starts operating through activation and operation of these offloads relays. It sheds load in stages as per their setting and design implementation in the system. These can can be multi stages to ensure there is no excess load shedding leading to further instabilities like overvoltage and high frequency in the system. In any grid code or standard or regulation for power system, frequency has two major ranges out of which the first is operating range which is a narrow range around nominal frequency like 50 Hz or 60 Hz. These operating ranges are kept in general plus 0.5 to minus 0.5 Hz around the nominal frequency. This range varies in various grids depending on their sizes, types of frequency control measures, rate of change of frequency size of the largest unit, size of largest generating plants etc. Then there are emergency limits or critical limits which are upper and lower settings where the instantaneous stripping of generators are set so that they do not suffer mechanical damages. System is designed with its automatic control to operate within operational range. However, in case these ranges are breached then emergency control action like under frequency load shedding, generation tripping system protection scheme etc. operate to avoid reaching the critical frequency range in the system. The North American Electric Reliability Corporation NERC, has established a mandatory reliability standard PRC 006, which requires the implementation of automatic under frequency load shedding UFLS, programs in power systems. The standard aims to establish design and documentation requirements for UFLS programs to prevent widespread blackouts during under-frequency events and provide last resort system preservation measures. The standard applies to planning coordinators, UFLS ownership, operation and control entities, and transmission owners owning elements identifying the UFLS program. Its purpose is to ensure that power system operators have effective and reliable UFLS systems in place to prevent the frequency of the power system from dropping too low and protect against power outages and damage to equipment. PRC 006 outlines requirements for UFLS systems, including the design, testing, and operation of the relay equipment used for UFLS. It also specifies conditions that must be met for the UFLS system to operate effectively, with the ultimate goal of maintaining the stability and reliability of the power grid. By adhering to this st standard, power system operators can ensure that their UFLS systems are effective and reliable, and can prevent widespread blackouts during under-frequency events. NERC PRC 006 Requirement 1 requires planning coordinators to develop criteria for identifying potential items in the bulk electric system, Bs. These criteria should take into account historical events and system studies and include interconnected portions of the Bs in adjacent planning coordinator areas and regional entity areas. The selection process and the specific criteria used should be documented along with the reasoning behind the selection of specific areas. Examples of criteria that can be used include identifying areas with limited transmission capacity, high reliance on a single generator or transmission line, prone to extreme weather events, susceptible to going out of step during extreme events, 
or that can island with P4-P7 planning criteria level events, and those with planned landing schemes. Data sets that can be used include past events of a landing, extreme events and their impact, real system landing events, and system study analysis like automatic multi-level contingency analysis. These criteria and data sets are necessary to identify and prevent the formation of islands, maintain the stability and reliability of the power grid, and comply with NERC PRC 006 requirements. The second requirement of NERC PRC 006 focuses on the selection of islands for the design of UFLS programs. Planning coordinators must identify islands based on the criteria established in requirement R1. In addition, Islands resulting from relay schemes or special protection systems must also be included. It is essential that a single island should include all portions of the bulk electric system within the planning coordinator's area or the interconnection. If the planning coordinator's area resides in multiple regional entity areas, each of those areas must be identified as an island. Planning coordinators may adjust island boundaries for contiguous regional islands suitable for simulation by mutual consent. To comply with this requirement, planning coordinators must identify islands based on the criteria set forth in requirement R1. They must also consider islands resulting from out-of-step relays, special protection schemes, and identify islands for simulation activities. For example, SPPPC has identified two islands for designing its UFLS program, SPPPC Island, less SPS, ZEL, and SPS, ZEL Island. SPPPC Island was selected by applying various criteria, including system studies, historical events, and adjusting island boundaries to produce contiguous regional islands, SPS. ZEL Island was selected based on past UFLS events in the SPS. ZEL area in 2008. By selecting appropriate islands, planning coordinators can effectively design and implement UFLS programs, ensuring the reliability and stability of the bulk electric system. In Requirement 3, planning coordinators are required to develop an under-frequency load shedding UFLS, program with specific performance characteristics. These performance characteristics should be simulated under frequency conditions resulting from an imbalance scenario within the identified islands. The UFLS program must ensure that the frequency remains above the underfrequency performance characteristic curve for at least 60 seconds or until a steady state condition between 59.3 Hz and 60.7 Hz is reached. Similarly, the frequency must remain below the over-frequency performance characteristic curve for at least 60 seconds or until a steady-state condition between 59.3 Hz and 60.7 Hz is reached. Additionally, the volts per Hz v /Hz, should not exceed 1.18 per unit for longer than 2 seconds cumulatively per simulated event, and must not exceed 1.10 per unit for longer than 45 seconds cumulatively per simulated event at each generator bus and generator step-up transformer high side bus associated with each of the following. Individual generating units greater than 20 MVA directly connected to the Bs, Generating plants or facilities greater than 75 MVA directly connected to the Bs. Facilities consisting of one or more units connected to the Bs at a common bus with total generation above 75 MVA gross nameplate rating. By developing and implementing a UFLS program with these performance characteristics, planning coordinators can ensure that the power system remains stable and reliable during under frequency events ultimately preventing power outages and damage to equipment. There are two major considerations which are frequency and overflux monitoring while designing the UFLS. In an island, it is important to ensure proper under-frequency operation during system dynamics. Generator under-frequency and over-frequency protection must be considered to ensure automatic under-frequency load shedding, offals, design and operation. This is done by checking island frequency within frequency limits to avoid tripping of generation with under and over frequency protection. If this is not considered, additional disturbance due to generation tripping on under and over frequency can cause instability of the island even after offless operation. 
to comply with this requirement, the generator under and over frequency trip settings must be modeled in simulation. Dynamic simulations should be performed with and without awful under varying scenarios to ensure that the system operates properly. Each transformer has overflux flux protection in the form of V by F protection. The actual magnitude of the magnetic flux in the generator stator or transformer core is difficult to measure, so it can be quantified in terms of per unit voltage per hertz, as magnetic flux is proportional to ratio of voltage and frequency. V by as a measure of the generator stator and transformer core magnetic flux. Excessive magnetic flux in the transformer or generator can cause thermal damage and unwanted protection system operation. To comply with this requirement, V by F for generators at the generator terminal bus and or a generator step up, GSSU, transformer high side bus should be plotted from dynamic simulation. This plot shows the frequency performance characteristics which is required to be ensured while designing under frequency load shedding. It basically consists of under and over frequency trip setting of generators and under and over frequency performance characteristics of bees while designing load shedding scheme. The next two requirements of the NERC UFLS standard focus on coordinated UFLS design and program performance characteristics. The first of these, requirement 4, requires planning coordinators to conduct a UFLS design assessment every five years to ensure that their program meets performance requirements and for each identified island. To conduct this assessment, they must use dynamic simulation to evaluate the program's ability to meet the performance characteristics outlined in requirement R3. In addition to modeling under and over frequency trip settings, the assessment should also evaluate any automatic load restoration that affects frequency stabilization and operates during the simulation. This assessment helps planning coordinators identify any necessary modifications to their UFLS program and ensure it remains effective in maintaining frequency stability. Requirement 5 addresses the need for coordinated UFLS program design among planning coordinators whose areas are part of the same identified island. To achieve this coordination, planning coordinators can either develop a common UFLS program design or conduct a joint UFLS design assessment. If they choose to conduct an independent UFLS design assessment, they must identify modifications to the UFLS program to meet requirement R3 and report these modifications as recommendations to other planning coordinators and the ERO. This coordination ensures that UFLS programs across unidentified talent are designed to work together and effectively maintain frequency stability. Requirement 6, 7, and 8 focus on UFLS database management and data sharing among planning coordinators. Under Requirement 6, each planning coordinator is required to maintain a UFLS database with necessary data to model its UFLS program at least once a year and keep evidence of it. The database should include data such as generator data, protective relay data, and system data, which are necessary to simulate the performance of the UFLS program. This is an essential requirement to ensure that the UFLS program is functioning correctly and meeting the performance requirements. Requirement 7 mandates that each planning coordinator must provide its UFLS database to other planning coordinators within its interconnection. This is necessary for efficient UFLS program coordination and to ensure that all entities in the interconnection have accurate and up-to-date information about others' UFLS programs. Lastly, under Requirement 8, each UFLS entity is required to provide data to its planning coordinators as specified to support maintenance of each planning coordinator's UFLS database. This requirement ensures that the planning coordinators have access to the necessary data to maintain their UFLS databases and can make informed decisions about the UFLS program's performance characteristics. In summary, these requirements focus on ensuring that planning coordinators have access to accurate and up-to-date information about each other's UFLS programs, and that they maintain the necessary data to model their UFLS program and simulate its performance. 
Requirement 9 focuses on the implementation of the UFLS program in accordance with the UFLS design and implementation plan. The planning coordinator is responsible for providing the UFLS design and implementation plan, including a corrective action plan, to the UFLS entity. The UFLS entity is then responsible for equipping its assets with the necessary UFLS relays and trip settings to enable automatic tripping of load as per the UFLS program design and schedule for implementation. The UFLS entity must provide training to ensure that its personnel are aware of the UFLS program design and required actions during an event. Additionally, the UFLS entity must implement and test the UFLS program design and schedule for implementation on its assets in each planning coordinator area where it owns assets. To ensure the effectiveness of the UFLS program, the UFLS entity participate in periodic UFLS drills and exercises to identify areas for improvement. Moreover, the UFLS entity must work closely with the planning coordinators to implement any modifications or updates to the UFLS program design and schedule in a timely and effective manner. Compliance with these requirements ensures the successful implementation and operation of the UFLS program. One example is shown here where a UFLS entity has forecasted its peak load and has been instructed by a PC to install UFLS relays for providing load shedding of 25% of its peak load when frequency touches 59.3 Hz. It also states that in cases of other demand scenarios, the minimum load shedding can be up to 10% of its peak load. It has also provided the load shedding details for further under frequency events. It also provided the detail that UFLS relays intentional time delays is less than 30 cycles. Requirement 10 focuses on the implementation of overvoltage control actions by the transmission owner to ensure system stability during under frequency load shedding events. To comply with this requirement, the planning coordinator will analyze the overvoltage situation with automatic under frequency load shedding operation using a simulation study. The study will identify the necessary changes in transmission line overvoltage trip settings, capacitor bank voltage trip settings, reactor switching voltage settings, time delay coordination, and other switching criteria. Transmission owners must provide automatic switching of its existing capacitor banks transmission lines, and reactors to control over voltage as required by the UFLS program and schedule for implementation. They must also use a RAS or special protection scheme for switching these devices. Transmission owners must have documents such as relay settings and tripping logic to ensure proper implementation of overvoltage control actions. By complying with this requirement, Transmission owners can ensure the stability and reliability of the system during under-frequency load shedding events. NERC PRC 006 Standard Requirements 11 and 12 focus on the UFLS operation assessment and design review of a planning coordinator's own area, while Requirements 13 and 14 involve a joint review and design assessment for the combined UFLS scheme. To comply with these requirements, Planning coordinators must assess the performance and effectiveness of the UFLS program within one year of a BSA landing event resulting in system frequency excursions below the initializing set points of the UFLS program. This assessment should evaluate the performance of UFLS equipment and the effectiveness of the UFLS program. Planning coordinators must gather data on the UFLS program's operation during the underfrequency event such as the time of activation, the load shedding sequence, and the amount of load shed. They must also evaluate the performance of UFLS equipment, such as relays and trip settings, to ensure that they operated correctly and as intended during the event. Additionally, the effectiveness of the UFLS program, including the load shedding strategy, must be evaluated to determine whether it achieved its intended objectives. If any deficiencies in UFLS equipment or the UFLS program that may have contributed to inadequate performance or effectiveness during the event are identified, 
planning coordinators must conduct an assessment of the event within one year of actuation to evaluate UFLS equipment performance and UFLS program effectiveness, and a UFLS design assessment two years of the event actuation. Lastly, planning coordinators must document the assessments and maintain evidence of compliance with NERC PRC 0065 requirements. This overall summarizes the automatic under-frequency load shedding scheme design, operation, review, assessment and complaints process by various entities. Let us have one example. Here is one example collected from Western Electricity Coordinating Council WEC. It shows the software utilized along with modeling requirements to meet the objectives of UFLS design study based on dynamic simulation analysis. The next step is to have a load generation scenario which is 10%, 20% and 25% gaps between load and generation in the system to simulate under frequency event. This is followed without an identification in Western Interconnection Region. Planning coordinators in the Western Interconnection have regularly participated in a joint regional review to identify the portions of the interconnection's bulk electric system, Bs, that may form islands. The criteria used to identify the formation of plausible islands in the Western Interconnection includes consideration of historical events, system studies and any portions of the bees designed to detach into islands because of remedial action scheme, RAS, operation. Based on these criteria, the consensus among planning coordinators in the Western Interconnection is that the formation of two planned islands in the Western Interconnection of the North Island and the South Island continues to be an adequate basis for the interconnection-wide coordinated UFLS program. Identification of both North and South Islands is based on opening tie lines in the WEC Island as shown here. After creating the load generation scenario, modeling of underfrequency relays and other associated models for performing automatic protection and control activities and finally setting up the case for dynamic simulation, it is important to decide on substation nodes for monitoring wide area parameters including frequency and V and voltages. After this various simulations are performed for different scenarios first to check system behavior without under frequency load shedding and existing under frequency load shedding. This provides a quick review of whether the existing design is sufficient for present and future system stability during under free frequency events or not. The last slide shows performance characteristic of UFLS scheme after under frequency events. The first picture provides that UFLS operation is adequate and system frequency is recovered quickly as per design. The second plot shows inadequate as well as delayed recovery with UFLS operation requiring to check the speed of relay operation and load shedding quantum assessment. The last plot shows poor UFLS design which is not able to arrest the frequency and recovery is significantly delayed indicating inadequate load shedding. Thank you for listening. Hope this video helped you in getting some knowledge about the NERC PRC6 standard on UFLS. Do not forget to like the content and subscribe. I would request to suggest new power system topics on which I should prepare a video for knowledge sharing.